Welcome back to the Forever Everything Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Cleef. On today's episode, Gabe Giannis and I, we're back on the mic for our weekly episode. This episode, we talk about re-affiliation with CrossFit, our thoughts on CrossFit, the future of CrossFit, and how we want to play you know, the best part we can in supporting the overall community, the affiliates, and our members in our gyms. We talk about Ava's Kitchen. If you're interested in coming to the Bay Area, February 18th. We're having a charity event supporting children and families fighting pediatric cancer. It'd be amazing to see you. Make sure you check out the podcast show notes to come out to Ava's Kitchen and to see all other things going on here at NC Fit. Let's dive into a great episode with Mr. Gabe Giannis and myself. Let's go. Recording in progress. And you know what it is? Is when your hair starts to really grow out, your hats don't fit the same. So I got this new. It's true. This is a new NC Fit hat. I, I love this new hat. I was rocking it in Wadapalooza. I just got back from Miami. Um, you know, here's something interesting. I, I saw your hair. Obviously, we'll talk about that. But here's something interesting about travel. So I head out to Miami. I meet a bunch of people who's awesome. Uh, head back. And then our servers and website shut down. And to say it was a little bit stressful time, of course. And then boom, I get a little sick, right? You could probably hear it a little bit, like in my voice, like I'm a little sick. You know, I, I just don't know if there's a way to avoid it, man. I've traveled so much over the years. And when you travel from like hot and cold weather, different weather, you meet a ton of people. I roll jujitsu. I just figure like, dude, when I come home, I'm going to probably get sick. And so just loading up on some vitamin C and that type of stuff. But anyways, I don't know. When you travel, is there anything special that you do or is it just is what it is? Um, <clears throat> well, so yes, there, there are definitely some things that I, I try and do. But I think with your particular type of travel, it's difficult, right? So a lot of what you can do to kind of control, or at least my understanding of it, how your immune system responds to anything is like stress levels, right? Like elevated stress levels, you're going to just be more susceptible. And the funny thing about what you mentioned is usually you don't get sick when you're high stress because your body is actually like operating at like, we can't get sick right now. Like it, it's like, as soon as like you relax and kind of take a deep breath because everything's over, that's when it's like, boom, just like your body is finally like put their defenses down a little bit. And that's when you end up getting sick. So it's funny because it kind of makes sense, right? Like you were go, go, go. You were traveling in Miami, came back. Our emails were down. Our website was down. It was kind of a chaotic week. And then everything was back up and running, you know, yesterday, the day before we recorded this. So I'm not saying that that's exactly what happened, but it lines up with my understanding of it, which is, you know, you finally, you know, not that things are perfect, but you finally had a chance to like take a deep breath and your body was like, all right, we're chilling. And there you go. Now you end up getting a little bit sick. But to, to, to answer your question, and I actually remember hearing this, I don't know if it was on a podcast or anything, but it was actually um, our, our good friend of NC Fit, Kelly Sturette, that mentioned this. Um, maybe it was the talk that he gave um, at the Collective Summit a few years back, but just talking about how like, when you travel, you're naturally going to be in an elevated state of stress, even if you're going on vacation or whatever, because you're not sleeping in your own bed you're probably a little dehydrated, you know, things are changing, whatever. And like the human body is by definition put in a state of stress when they're out of routine. So sometimes people don't realize that it's not that your trip or travel has to be stressful. You dealt with flight delays. Like, yes, that is additionally stressful, but just the fact that you're getting out of your routine is putting your body in some sort of stress. So he was very big of like, you know, not having added sugars while you're out traveling, like making sure that you're not drinking any alcohol when you're traveling, like all the things that are in your control, kind of diminishing them. But with that being said, you know, I think that's really hard when you're going to Miami for two, three days and you're like, you know, you're meeting with people, you're like probably going to go out at night and like, you know, socialize with people, make connections, so on and so forth. So I think that that advice applies a little bit more to like, you know, if you're traveling to visit family or, you know, even if you're going on vacation, like just trying to like kind of keep the things in your control a little bit, you know, toned down. But um, yeah, when I travel, I try and adhere to that advice that I remember from Kelly and just like anything that's in my control, like we're going to California next week. And well, it's our first time traveling with a newborn. So that'll be an adventure all in itself. But we do have a plan of like, and we always do this. First day we get there, we'll go to Whole Foods and just buy a whole bunch of stuff to have in the hotel room, right? A whole bunch of stuff for like breakfast, snacks, even lunch, so that we're not like super dependent on like, you know, eating out or what does the hotel have, or you end up just getting a pastry at a Starbucks. So like first day, always 
go to the grocery store and just get a bunch of stuff. You can always get a refrigerator added to your hotel room, even if they don't have one. Unless you're you at the CrossFit Games and every single athlete well, requests a uh, refrigerator. Right. And then they say, hey, we ran out of refrigerators for you. But anyways, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, but that's a good pro tip, right? Like people don't know. Even if your room doesn't come with a refrigerator, I think by law, because of certain medications and stuff that some people have, um, hotels are required if you request for one to have a refrigerator. So you can always have a refrigerator in your hotel room, ask for one and, you know, just make a stop at the grocery store and get some cold cuts, get some fruits, get some veggies, just have some stuff. So you're not going for the vending machine or, you know, having to like check out what do they have downstairs at the lobby that you can need if you get hungry. And at least some of your meals are under your control. So that's something that on Monday, when we fly in, we already have planned out. We have a rental car, We'll go to the Whole Foods at Campbell, get a whole bunch of stuff for the days that we're there. And, you know, hopefully that'll that that'll help out. Um, but yeah, I mean, aside from that, you know, it's just the more you can stick to your routine while you're, you know, uh, on travel, the more it'll help. But I think some of it's inevitable, man, you know, Dude, some of it I think is inevitable. So I so, you know, it's interesting. Uh, yeah. For the CrossFit Games, it was always funny because they'd put all the athletes at one hotel for the most part. Right. And uh, it was like. um after a few years, I decided to start staying off site because you had like the, the, um, the venue where like all the meetups were at all the, you know, judging, like all that stuff happened at, let's just say it's one property. And I chose to stay off site because dude, that property, like just even when you walked in, it wasn't like, you know, getting stormed by people or anything like that. It wasn't that the reason why I didn't want to stay there wasn't because of that. It was because as soon as you entered, they had big posters. It just, it, it took me to a state of kind of like um, fight or flight type thing instead of like being at another hotel where I could just kind of like be easy. Um, but anyways, when you order in the, the refrigerator, that is funny. I haven't thought about that for a few years because um, with Ava, she used to have medicine that was refrigerated. And I just remember uh, like, it was one hotel like, oh, we're all out. We're like, hey, we have medicine for my daughter. And they're like, oh, and then miraculously one showed up. So it was, it was, it was good. But um, anyways, Waterpalooza was great. We have a lot to talk about today. I want to discuss a few things, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just before we skim over that, because I think that you made a really important point. And I know we have the Open coming up. So a lot of people might be thinking about, you know, excelling in, in competition or so on. But I think that there's there's a really good nugget in what you mentioned. And I like that you did that when you were competing because it's so important. You know, the quicker, especially if you're doing like multiple events, like at the CrossFit Games, right? The quicker you can go from like being on to coming off, the better, right? Like you're spending a weekend competing where you have to be at 110% RP10 during the actual events. And a lot of people... Like if you continue in that excited state throughout the day, or even when you get back to your hotel, it's going to hurt you. You're, you're wasting gas, you're wasting energy. So the fact that you thought about, you know, not being in the hotel where there's the poster and you're being reminded that you're at this competition, but you can kind of like, okay, now I'm just at a hotel with my family is a great strategy to bring yourself out of the competitive mindset and make sure that you're actually recovering when you're not on the floor, as opposed to just constantly being in the state of I'm at, at the CrossFit Games. And that applies for yep. people, whether they're the open, you know, doing sure. the opens or or whatever, you know, like if you want to excel in Rolling the open, social media all day, right? Just getting your anxiousness yeah. higher and higher for sure. But even even like a more precise example, like I think if, if you're doing the open, like you're going to Friday Night Lights, you want to put out a good score, like the more you can avoid like being super amped up from the second you get to the gym watching your friends, the earlier heats go, like, you know, having like a lot of anxiety ever since like the workout got announced, the more you can like save all that for three, two, one, go, the better. And also for your recovery, the more after you do the workout, you can kind of like get your breathing back under control, like kind of try and come back a little bit. Not saying that you have to like finish your workout and head home and like do some meditation. Definitely stick around for Friday night lights, cheer on your friends, so on and so forth. But just recognize the fact that if you continue to be like super amped up, it's just energy that you're using. Um, and that could be detrimental to performance in the coming weeks. Yeah, and, and, and that's a learning experience too. Like, I mean, we've talked about this before, but like, for me, I always thought like early on in CrossFit, I thought I had to be like pumped up, but dude, you you, you got to conserve. I think that was a good way to put it. Like as soon as you're done with your events, I would try and get my body back down to like this, this, this state of, you know, normalcy as fast as I can. So for example, for me at the CrossFit Games for years, 
I would uh, purchase a uh, like suite, like a box, you know, like like a, and that suite or box would be like my home away from home, right? So I'd go compete. I'd go up to this tennis sta to the stadium. I'd have my suite, and that's just where I hung out at to kind of like recover. Boom, um, and then I'd go back at it, and th that that's a really good way to look at it. And I think for people that are doing the open, the advice I'd have for them is. You know, it's not the same as the CrossFit Games, obviously. But like, as soon as you see the workouts that I'm going to do, and I'm doing the Open this year, we'll talk about it, is if the workout's announced on Thursday, I'm going to go get this done. Historically, I got it done Friday morning, historically. Now, because it's more like community focused for me and a little bit less about my performance, I'll do it probably Friday night. But in the past, it would just be like me and like the former NorCal CrossFit team, just like hitting it by ourselves Friday morning, getting it out of the way, um, and then later on at night, being able to celebrate with the community this year, I'm, I'm going to see what I do because I, I'm a little less concerned about my performance and more about engaging with our members and being about some, some stuff. But at the same time, I don't want it to be about me in the open announcement. I want it to be about the members. So I might do it earlier in the day. I don't know. We, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. All part of the evolution of kind of where we've gone <clears throat> as, as a business, where you've gone as as an athlete and and you know a member of this community and i think that that's a good segue to what we wanted to talk about today you know some exciting news that's coming out on on social channels today when this podcast gets released um so yeah man i mean you know i think a good place to start is just kind of the history of you know norcal crossfit nc fit and kind of where we are today i'm super pumped for this man like personally being a part of this team and organization you know I share a lot of the optimism that you have for the future and kind of the the new role that we're taking and being part of what I think is a really strong tailwind for the entire CrossFit community. So I won't take any more wind out of your sails, man. Let, let, let us know what's going on. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously as part of the Open, you have to be an affiliated location, right? So for us at NC Fit, you know, we started off as, and this is like way back in the day, CrossFit Santa Clara then CrossFit Mountain View. And then we had multiple different brands. We're like, that doesn't make sense. So we put underneath one gym, which is called NorCal CrossFit. We were in NorCal CrossFit for years. And then over the years, for a variety of factors, we want to be a little bit more in control of our own destiny. So we branded it NC Fit. And then over the years, um, we ended up, you know, kind of unaffiliating from CrossFit. We still align with the methodology and the sport and the community. There was just some some directional things that maybe we didn't, we didn't see eye to eye on. And now I think things are different, you know, um, the landscape shifts and I think people shift, I shift, you know, and, 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 and I'm humble enough to admit that like the, the person I am today is not the same person I was two, three years ago or the person five years ago. And, and frankly, I think that's a good thing. And so we will be reaffiliating. Uh, actually, technically we already have, we already have technically reaffiliated this is a little bit ago, but we haven't really publicly talked about it. Um, we re we will be affiliating as NC Fit CrossFit um, here in the Bay Area. Um, we're affiliating several locations and we're really doing it for a few reasons, right? Um, primarily, I don't know if they're, this is the most important one, but you know, I, I, I believe in where CrossFit's going. You know, I, I think that leadership is focused on sharing CrossFit with the masses and they want to do it in a way that I'm in align with. And Don Fall, the new CEO, he's been a member at NC Fit for eight years and I'm I'm confident in the direction that he wants to take it. So that's one big reason, right? Is that we're we're fired up on where CrossFit is going. Number one. Um, number two is, you know, we want to support the CrossFit community, right? We want to we want to help grow. You know, when I look at our membership here, like I just walked into the gym. This guy just, by the way, he just ran a two twenty or something, eight hundred meter run. It was crazy. Anyways, and when I see our members getting life changing results. They're getting life-changing results off the methodology of CrossFit. And it's the same methodology that really paved the way for our business and for me and for, for everything. And we want to support the community and support the growth of that and not detract from that. That's really important to me. Um, so that's like the second one. And then ultimately, you know, CrossFit's woven into the DNA here at NC Fit. And it's woven into my DNA. You know, I've won the games. I competed professionally. I taught seminars. I've, I mean, I've, I've been as deep into CrossFit as you can get. And, and no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I'll always be attached to CrossFit. And I want to do everything in my power to see CrossFit be as successful as humanly possible. Because not only will that benefit everybody, but it'll also impact a lot of members' lives. So yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm in a really positive state about it. I feel really good about where CrossFit's going. And 
I want to be on that journey with them. And I want NC Fit to represent the tip of the spear, the 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 premier affiliate in the world. Like, what are we doing here? We do CrossFit, but we are NC Fit. We have our own, you know, we have our programming. We have our the way our facilities look. We have the way that we train our team. But at the end of the day, the the service we're providing is, is CrossFit, and I think that's why it only seems right to affiliate to be able to use the mark. Yeah, man, and I think that you, you know the biggest thing for me is that. Nothing has changed, at least in my my time with NC Fit, right? I've with minute I've been with NC Fit. It's going to come up on on five years in August. So call it four years and Bro, a half. You're right aging now. me. You're aging me. I'm I'm feeling older and older every time I talk to people. Oh, I've been at the company for ten years. Like shit. <laughs> so so I've been with NC Fit for four and a half years, and in my time here, you know, I I've I've gone through a couple of those shifts, right? Of you know, we were NC Fit, but we were still affiliates. Then we were NC Fit and not affiliates, and now we're you know NC Fit and proud CrossFit affiliates. But the thing that never changed, at least in my eyes, was the fact that we wanted to help as many people as possible leave freely and fully outside the gym and really help gym owners build better. And I think that you know the gym owners and helping the community build better. You know we made decisions in the past that truly were at the time motivated with helping as many gym owners as possible. Excel in the time where there was, you know, some uncertainty and a time where, you know, there was a lot of kind of moving pieces going on. And that is still the reason that we're making these decisions today, right? Like, it's just things have changed. We've evolved as a team, you've evolved as a leader, and CrossFit has evolved in, you know, who's taken over leadership and the direction that it's going. And I think that I am, I am personally incredibly excited that all of those kind of values and directions are now in line. There isn't like a, you know, someone's going over there. So we have to make a tough decision between going where we want to go and the way that they're going. Everything's just headed in the same direction. So it makes it super easy, right? It's like, yeah, let's be a part of this solution and the momentum that is moving in the right direction and help so many, you know, affiliate gym owners and coaches out there um, and be excited about doing it under the CrossFit flag. So I, I'm personally super pumped up, man. You know, I've I've been doing this stuff for forever. You know, CrossFit changed my life. It changed my family's life. You know, they still go to a CrossFit gym here, even though they moved from New York to Texas. Like wherever they go, that's kind of what they seek, right? Because it it had a huge impact on their life. So yeah, man, I'm I'm pumped. I think this is going to be super positive, and I'm also excited to just you know from here just put our head down and focus on what I said the other day on Slack, like being the best fucking crossfit gym in the world period yeah and you know for me it's highly personal right like this is a really sure. personal discussion you know for for anybody listening to understand my background i was introduced to crossfit in 2006 it really changed my life i then founded a crossfit gym expanded crossfit gym i opened up corporate wellness based on that we brought sponsors to the crossfit community we we were on seminar staff for years like i was i mean as connected as you can get and, you know, when, when maybe there were some things that, you know, we didn't necessarily see eye to eye on, it was very difficult for me because it was hard for me to differentiate between the brand, the company, the methodology and the sport. And I think for other people looking at it, they, 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 they don't realize that it is a lot of, it is a business and you could love the methodology. You could love the community and you could be all about that. And I always have been, I always will be, but maybe not have a difference of opinion over here. And now I feel like all of those have realigned for me. And like, I felt like once we made the decision, you know, for some people listening, they're probably like, okay, this is, you know, of course, this is no big deal. For me, it was a big deal because it's a big deal because we went a different, we went a direction because we were kind of put in that position. And we thought at the time it was the best thing to do for everybody. And now it feels really good to feel like this is the best thing to do for everybody. Like I want to see the community thrive. I want to see affiliates succeed. I want to see athletes reach their potential. And I want to be a part of that growth. And again, not detract from it. And, um, you know, that's, that's the mission. That's what I'm dedicated to. And ultimately, like for me, I don't know who I was talking to the other day. We were talking about this exact subject. I just said, look, it just feels like the right thing to do. You could, you could sit there and say whatever you want to anybody listening. But for me personally, it felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulders when we made this decision and it feels right to me. And I'm really looking forward to 
embracing it further, supporting the community more, and representing a specific niche within the CrossFit space that maybe other gym owners might, you know, I, I want to support them. I want to show them what, you know, what we've done and maybe they'll like it. Maybe they won't, but at least we're giving them ideas and concepts of what we've done over the last 15 years. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, if there's anything you can share right now, and you've had a lot of conversations with Don, you know, you mentioned Don Fall, the new CEO of CrossFit, been a member of NC Fit for eight years. You know, our coaches, our community actually knew him pretty well. And we were very excited um, just you know, for, for, for his success to be named CEO as soon as he was. And then I know that when that happened, you know, you started having conversations with him and, and, you know, they, they kind of led us to the point we're at now. I'm curious, you know, what are some of the most, what are some of the things that excited you the most about him taking over his leadership and kind of his vision for where he wants to see CrossFit go in the future? I mean, if I'm, if I'm being completely up, this is a straight shot is that right now there's a board, there's a CEO and there's a team that are making big decisions for CrossFit. It's no longer one individual that owns the company hundred percent that could do anything they want. And so that's, that's, that's appealing to me because we don't have to worry about, you know, like a, a sharp right turn because there's checks and balances in place. And I would say that for any company, by the way, not just this one. So I think that's one piece, right? You have a board, you have a system in place so that you can't just make these sharp right, sharp left, but instead it's like, hey, we're moving in this direction. I think that another thing that Don's going to do is, and I think this will be coming out in the next couple of weeks, is he's going to announce to the community what the vision is. Where are we going? Like, what is the five, 10-year plan for CrossFit? That's never been spoken about. And he's been taking his time, you know, doing his due diligence, and he's coming out with what he wants to do. And what he wants to do for the community, for the sport, for the everything is in alignment with where I think it needs to go as well, right? So I'd say number one is you, you, you're avoiding these sharp rights and sharp less. Number two is he's actually creating a vision of where the company wants to go. And, and with that shared vision, now everybody could be on board to go in that direction. So I think Cross will only excel further instead of having these tangents that are going off in different directions. I think that he is recognizing the pitfalls at HQ in terms of working in silos. And he's working on how can even people at HQ collaboratively work instead of looking at each other as, you know, just separate organizations, but as one group trying to raise the bar. And, you know, my conversations with Austin Meliolo have been really good too. So Austin took over as the interim um, GM of affiliates, which is a huge honor for him. I mean, it's, it's the largest revenue stream that CrossFit has. So it's a pretty big deal. And he took over for Gary Gaines. And I think him and I spent a lot of time together the last couple of weeks. And one of the things that he said to me that's really resonating, and for some people listening, they might not, this might not resonate with them, but it resonated for me. He said, a goal, a big goal of ours for the next year is to help affiliates see a 5% increase in revenue. And the reason why it was so important to me is number one, first off, they have no, they're, they're gathering data on how, how affiliates are even doing in the first place. But number two is it's this idea that he was okay and HQ is okay to talk about success as a factor is money. And that was big for me because the thing about it is, yes, we want to impact lives. Yes, we, you know, the product on the floor matters. But if we don't run successful gyms that create enough revenue to pay the owner, to pay the coaches, we'll just be in this cycle where people, the coaches are just like part-timers or just getting trade-outs for memberships. But if we could start having gym owners look at it like a business and growing their revenue, Dude, I think that alone, as as far as a mindset shift from HQ, is really powerful for me. That's something that's really, you know, that a piece of everything else we're talking about. No, I mean, I think that's huge. I think I think there's no there's no way to overstate how big of a shift that is. I know that, like, you know, for some people listening, yeah, they're um, like, oh, like no big deal. It's a huge shift, right? No, it's a huge deal because we're talking about revenue. We're talking about first of all, like knowing the numbers which I think is huge, you know, long overdue that we can't just say, okay, at a snapshot, how are CrossFit affiliates doing? What's the average take-home income that they're bringing? What's the average gross revenue? Like we should know that because I mean, and you know this, we operate this way in NC Fit, what you don't measure doesn't move, right? So if you're not even measuring those things, how can we know that the affiliates are moving in the right direction and we're setting up the community for the trajectory they need, not only to impact lives, that's super important, but 
there are going to be no lives to impact if gyms are closing their doors down. And that's what unfortunately has happened over the past couple of years, because there haven't been systems, there haven't been support, and the community has really been lacking. And, you know, with the collective, we've tried our best, and we're going to continue to try to, to, to play a role in, in exactly that, right? You know, our tagline for the collective this year is we're trying to help gyms win, right? We've identified that. What do gyms need to win? They need high quality coaching. They need programming that is fun, right? Not just effective, not just going to get PRs, but fun, something that a lot of people don't realize because if they're not excited, they're not going to come back and they need business owners that are spending their time where it actually matters, right? They need business owners that aren't, you know, coming up with 21, 15 nines and squat cycles, but that are spending time creating sales processes, marketing processes, and actually moving the business in the right direction. And those are the three things that we're trying to help with the collective programming, better coaches and freeing time for gym owners. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited that, you know, back to what we were saying before, CrossFit is doing the same thing, right? Like they're now trying to identify, okay, how can we help gyms win? What does winning look like? Obviously revenue is a piece of that, right? Like a winning gym is a gym that has an owner that's able to take some vacation, that's able to pay its coaches, you know, a living wage plus a little bit more. Um, and I think the fact that we're finally having that conversation is huge and I'm excited to be a part of those conversations and a part of moving the needle in that direction. Dude. I mean, look at, they put out a affiliate playbook. They've put out so many things that I'm in, in direct alignment with. And these were things that, you know, I think there's a lot of people in the community that wish this happened 10 years ago, including myself, but you know what, man, like you said it best, like we're going to align with CrossFit. We're just going to move. We're never going to fucking talk about this again we're just moving forward and i need to and this is something i'm i'm taking on the chin myself is like i'm not reflecting on the past i'm just thinking about the future and the fact that we're having conversations about uh you know getting affiliates to think about business like you know one of the things that austin was saying and i agree with him is when he talks to a gym owner he assumes they're passionate he assumes that they love to coach he assumes all these things right like that's what a lot of people get into it for but we also then need to support with all the other things that build up the business, right? And I think that they're doing a lot of good things, man. I think that they're going to do, I, I do think from an affiliate community perspective, we may take one step back to get 10 steps forward. Meaning we may be talking to gym owners. Some of them might not make it. They, they, they got into it maybe as hobbyists and maybe it just isn't the right gig. But I do think when you're thinking about CrossFit 10 years from now, all these conversations we're having today are going to lay the framework for super successful entrepreneurs over the next couple of years to come. And, and I'm, I'm proud to play a small part in whatever that is that they want me to play a part of, you know? So am I, man. So am I, you yeah. know, I, I, I think that another thing that I'm excited about is how, you know, what we're doing that I've always been super proud of and what CrossFit is doing can, you know, amplify each other, right? Like, I've really, really enjoyed writing these bi-weekly gym owner newsletters. Like I <laughs> admittedly probably put more time into them than is, is ideal because we have a lot of things going on. But to me right now, that is one of the things that I am spending most of my energy on because A, it's like tied to like my voice and myself personally, but also because like, I think that it really is helping people. Like it's the one thing that I get replies to that get me really fired up because people seem to be like taking what we're putting out there and putting it into practice. So being able to in any way amplify that stuff with, you know, CrossFit getting it to reach out more people. And at the same time, I know that you getting behind like their playbook, for example, a tool that is super useful and getting more people to use it, like that kind of cross pollination of like, hopefully the things that we're doing that are really helpful can get to more gym owners. And the thing that CrossFit's doing that went a lot of work that went, you know, a lot of work and effort into, but isn't reaching as many people, we can get it to reach more people, I think is, is just going to benefit everyone in a way that is, is really powerful. And I'm really excited for. Well, like, you know what they say, like a rising tide raises all boats. And I, I'm a big believer in this. Like one of the things that, again, I was talking to actually Fern from uh, best, best hour of their day and Austin about was this idea that there are, there is a lot of information out there. Like CrossFit's doing a much better job in the past of delivering information for affiliates, but a lot of affiliates haven't been, um, it hasn't been a part of their culture to, to, to work with HQ in that fashion. It, it's always been transactional. Like I'm going to pay an affiliation fee and CrossFit's not going to do much for me. That was always the way it was for years. 
now CrossFit has more to, to deliver. And I think what we need to do is come together as, as an industry and magnify that. So meaning like, I think one of the things I pitched to them was, okay, let's just say February 1st, you're going to put out this affiliate playbook and you need Jason's team, Ben Bergeron's team, this team, whoever, like you name it, all these people to then magnify and say, Hey, gym owners, make sure to go check this out. And the reason why I'm so in favor of that is not because we're telling people to go to the NC fit collective and sign up for our session plans and programming. It's because I believe that if they download a playbook and it enhances their business, it'll only be good for our business in the long term because we're going to create some consistency in the marketplace, which is really where we need to go. The inconsistency in the marketplace is a huge, huge problem for all of us, any gym owner listening. And so we need to make sure that we're doing everything in our power to get consistency as high as possible because one poor, bad experience with CrossFit and they're never going back in again. Consistency, consistency is so important, man. And I think it's one of those things that people don't realize. We talk about it a lot in terms of coaches. And I think it's it's a perfect analogy to what you're saying, right? Because you can have a team, right? Let's say you have five coaches and you have two that like every time they hit the gym floor, it's a 10, but you have another three that like they float around like a two or three. It's a huge problem, man. Like I would take the team that everyone is a seven or eight every single time. And we can kind of coach them up from there versus the team where I have like two rock stars and three people that like, I'm almost like worried about the classes that they're going to coach. Because at the end of the day, you say this all the time, you know, people are always one bad experience away from leaving your gym. And if you have this like Russian roulette of coaches where someone is always going to give or consistently give a bad experience, it doesn't matter that everyone else on the team is constant nine and tens because all it takes is one bad experience. And to your point, for someone that is finally wanting to get into fitness and is finally like, you know, I'm going to give this CrossFit thing a shot. It takes one bad experience at a bad affiliate for them to like cross CrossFit off their list of things that they're going to try for fitness. And they're going to be like, yeah, I did that CrossFit thing. It's not for me. I'm checking out Orange Theory now, Barry's boot camp, yoga, running, whatever, because they had that one bad experience. If we can raise the level at which affiliates are operating at, at a consistent basis, it's huge. It's going to be huge for the space. Huge. And, and, and that's a major goal of mine. You know, like, I've, I I don't want to say I've sat on the sideline. That's not fair, right? But we've just been kind of watching, listening to HQ and seeing where they're going. And I'm I'm aligned. I, bottom line, I'm aligned. And we need to get more people off the couch doing CrossFit. And we need to get gyms to go from 10s and 2s to everybody a 5 plus, right? As an example, right? Like using it as an example. And you know, that's, that's a mission of ours. And obviously it's supported by a business case because we have the NC Fit Collective. Of course, we want to see gym owners use our programs and session plans, but I also want to see the overall community grow. And the only way we're going to do that is by having these constructive conversations. So like, yeah, man, I, I, I'm all about this. You know, I, I've been all about it, but it just feels like, you know, I, I, I think what felt the, you know, I, there was a little while where it was really difficult because you want to feel genuine in everything we do. Like if we talk about coaching, I'm coaching. If we talk about ownership, we own gyms. And it was difficult because for a while, you know, you're trying to have your own unique version of fitness. And, you know, I think that there were some things we were doing a little bit different in the CrossFit space, but at the end of the day, like what we're offering our gyms, if you ask our members, if, you know, whatnot, it's CrossFit. And it feels really good to be able to call it that. That's really the big difference for me right now is that I can go downstairs and use the mark CrossFit and not feel like I'm infringing or feel like I'm being uh, un, un, uh, you know, elite, whatever. I, I could just go and call it what it is. And I, anyways, man, I, I feel like a, a sandbag has been lifting off my shoulder. I hope the community feels the same way, you know, and, and if, you know, I, I would, I would not challenge, but I would encourage you, uh, that if you do see anything other than what it is, right. Just feels like the right thing to do. Right. Um, look at my history and just realize that like, I've been as deep into this space as humanly possible. <laughs> and, I was doing the right thing. I feel like at the time for our business, our members, our families. And I feel like this is really what's best for everybody right now, including myself personally. So yeah, if you want to hit me up, hit me up on social, Jason Kalipa, DM me. Let me know if you have any questions specifically about this more than happy to answer them. 
Awesome. And I think that one thing that I would love to do, and I, I, I'm, I'm sure you can organize it, is I'd like to have Don on, on the podcast sometime in the future. I'd love to ask him questions. I know you've had a bunch of conversations um, with him, um, but I would really appreciate having him on the podcast, talking a little bit, maybe after, you know, they kind of release this vision. I'd, I'd love to hear it from him and also give him an opportunity to have like a, a direct line at, you know, a lot of the gym owners and coaches that we have listening yeah. to this show and that are part of the collective. So if we can make that happen, I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate it. Yeah. I'll talk to him. I mean, obviously he's very close by. Um, and, uh, see, so yeah, I'll make that happen. One other thing I wanted to let people know about is that if you are listening to this and you feel like coming out to the Bay area, okay. I, I got to do a, a, a shameless plug here. Um, next month we have Ava's kitchen. It's exactly a month from today that we're recording. And just letting everybody know, it's on February 18th. And uh, Ava's Kitchen is an event that my wife puts on uh, to support kids and families fighting pediatric cancer. It's something we've done every year. We do that. We do blood drives. We do Be The Match bone marrow transplant uh, cotton swabs. These are things that are really important to us as a business and me personally. Um, but we are having Ava's Kitchen February 18th. Um, we'll go ahead and link it in the show notes. But uh, it is a amazing food live auction it is just the most amazing time and if you want to support kids and families fighting pediatric cancer every single penny raised every penny goes directly to them by the way we have it set up through another organization that we have so um just ava's kitchen if you want february 18th if you and your wife you and your significant other you by yourself want to come out and roll would love it i love that man i i love what you guys do and um you know i think it ties back to something you've said before that I think is so true that is, you know, the, the more, the more successful we can be as a business. And I think a lot of people can relate to this out there, whether they're gym owners or just entrepreneurs or coaches, you know, the more you can go out and also like give back and do really cool stuff for the community. Um, you know, I think that Ava's kitchen and what you guys have done has been super successful, but a part of that has been built off the success of NC fit. And I think that, that, that's not a bad thing. That's an amazing thing. That's the reason why what we do is so important and what gym out, out there is so important because if you own a gym in your community and you can grow it to be you know, at a point where you can now host events for your local community group or something that's passionate for you and give back a little bit, um, I think that that's you know, an incredible secondary benefit to what we do as, as gym owners. So it, it's a cool example of what I think other people can aspire to um, and something that, you know, us and CrossFit now want to help gym owners be able to do by growing their businesses first so that they can have, you know, something even a little extra to give back to the community with, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. The, the, since day number one, I've always been about it. Do what I love for a living, provide it to as many coaches, get as many coaches to provide it to as many members. And then with that membership base, let's go do good stuff and, you know, backing that up with action right? We host regular blood drives. That's a really easy thing that a gym owner can do that I think could save lives. Be the match, bone marrow cotton swab. If you haven't looked into it, just look into it. It's no big deal. Um, and then, you know, Ava's Kitchen and, 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 and fundraising for something that's important to you, right? If someone asks us, hey, what is NC Fit Philanthropic Mission? We've done a lot of stuff. We've done a lot of stuff in the past, right? We've We've built schools in Kenya. We've done all different types of things. A lot of law enforcement, military, Navy SEAL Foundation, but after Ava got sick, it was really easy for me just to kind of wrap my head around, hey, we're going to support, you know, because you can't support everything, right? And everything is great, for sure. But for us, it's like, I feel really connected to that. And I hope our community does as well. And, uh, you know, if you want to come out and be a part of the actual event, Ava's Kitchen, it's February 18th. And we should actually promote, you know, we've never actually done this. We haven't really promoted it to our members. I should probably put something like on our Facebook group or something, Gabe. It's never really been about we it's always been like just whoever shows up like we through our network, but I think we should promote it more to our members. Yeah. We'll put something together for sure. Dude. I love it, man. Well, Hey, last little note. If you use fit radio, this is not, I love flip radio. This is not a, like an ad. There was a mix. I walked into the gym today and there was the best mix called savage life by DJ Dynamix. If you have fit radio, go check out that mix. I thought it was fire. I thought it was great. So yeah, dude, that's, that's my last little note. Before, before we sign off, I have a question for you. Um, Liz, 
runs our social media, shout out Liz, asked me to ask you the question about how you invented the 25 pound med ball. That's an interesting question. So we had, <laughs> so, you know, we used to do wall balls with a 20 pound all the time and they got relatively easy. You're able to do a lot without as much impact. So then the 30 pounder came out and it was just heavy, dude. And I remember talking to rogue and being like, guys, we need to find something in between a 30 and a 25. Like 20 was too light. 30 was too heavy. And 25 hit this perfect spot where it also made twenties in the future feel a lot lighter but it wasn't as aggressive as a 30. So that's the way it was created. Um, yeah, we go. got we got one, we got a new product coming out with Rogue that I'm pretty excited about in the future. Oh uh, boy. Stay, stay tuned for that. We're <laughs> under NDA on that one, but stay tuned for that one. I, I'm, I'm excited for that. It's a 22 pound med ball. <laughs> Innovation. <laughs> Innovation. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Well, well, thanks everybody for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, hit us up on social, uh, check out the links. You know, we, we have the NC fit collective. I think that our team is just absolutely crushing right now. We have our new app. We have our monthly programming focuses. We have our 2023 outlook document. Actually the, the February programming outlook just came out this morning. I was looking at it. It's just absolutely beautiful with our, it's really the team is just smashing right now. So make sure to check out, uh, the link in any show notes you're looking at. And, um, Dude, I just hope if you're a gym owner, keep rising the tides, keep crushing it. If we can support you, let us know. If you're an athlete and you're listening, thanks for listening. And uh, if there's ever anything we could do, uh, Gabe and I love riffing. So if you have a question for us, hit us up on social at nc.fit, at Gabe, or at, you know, Jason Cleaver. We could, any one of them, we'll link it in the show notes.